Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for attending. My name is Acting Sergeant Jennifer Goodings, Media Relations Officer from the RCMP Central Region. Before we start, I would like to remind everyone to please turn off your cell phones and or put them on vibrate, please. In a few minutes, Assistant Commissioner Matt Peggs will deliver a statement, first in English, followed by the same statement in French for a Francophone audience. His name is spelt M-A-T-T-P-E-G-G-S. Following the statements from a representative, we will open the floor up for questions. We have representatives here from the RCMP, GTA, Southwest, GTA, INSET, and they will be available to answer questions. Here at the tables, you will find Staff Superintendent of Detective Operations, Joe Matthews of the Toronto Police Service, Inspector Scott Purchase, RCMP, Southwest, GTA, INSET, and Toronto Police Service, Superintendent Glenn Cournier, Durham Regional Police Service, Chief Superintendent Pat Morris from the Provincial Operations Intelligence Bureau of the OPP, Superintendent James Parr, Officer in Charge of Southwest GTA Inset, Superintendent Rhonda Corsi of the Regional York Regional Police, Bonjour, Mesdames et Messieurs, merci de votre présence. Je suis la Sergeant Interimaire Jennifer Goodings, responsible, responsable des relations avec les médias de la région du centre de la GRC. Avant de commencer, je voudrais rappeler à tout le monde d'étendre leur cellulaire ou de le mettre en mode vibration. Dans quelques minutes, le commissaire adjoint Matt Peggs fera une déclaration d'abord en anglais puis en français pour notre public francophone. Son nom s'inscrit M-A-T-T-P-E-G-G-S. Après les déclarations de nos représentants, nous passerons aux questions. Des représentants de l'équipe intégrée de la Sécurité nationale de la région du Grand Toronto de la GRC seront disponibles pour répondre aux questions. Surintendant principal, Joe Matthews du service de police de Toronto, inspecteur Scott Purchase de la de l'équipe l'intégré de la Sécu, sécurité nationale de la RGT de la GRC et service de police de Toronto, surintendant Glenn Cournier du service de police régional de Durham, le surintendant James Parr, officier responsable de l'équipe intégré de la sécurité nationale de la RGT de la GRC, puis superintendant Rhonda Corsi de service de la police, police régionale de York. I would now like to invite our CMP Assistant Commissioner Matt Peggs to the podium. J'aimerais maintenant inviter au micro le commissaire adjoint de la GRC, Matt Peggs. Hi, good morning, everyone. As was said, my name is Assistant Commissioner Matt Peggs. I'm the regional commander of the RCMP Central Region of Federal Policing. I'd like to wel welcome you and thank each and every one of you for joining us here today. I'm here to provide information on a terrorist attack that was prevented by the RCMP Federal Policing's Greater Toronto Area Integrated National Security Enforcement Team, who we'll call INSET. The GTA INSET is made up of the representatives, many of whom you see before you today. The RCMP, Toronto Police, CBSA, the Ontario Provincial Police, York Regional Police, Peel Regional Police Service, and the Durham Regional Police. With assistance that we get from the Ministry of the Attorney General of, of Canada and the Public, sorry, of Ontario and the Public Prosecution Service of Canada. INSET investigates threats to national security, including criminal extremism and terrorism. These investigations carried out by INSET look into the most serious threats to Canada's safety and security. On July 28, 2024, GTN set arrested a father and son at a hotel in Richmond Hill who were in the advanced stages of planning a serious, violent attack in Toronto. We became aware of this in early July. A publication ban is currently in place in order to protect the integrity of the complex investigation 
However, I will speak to the details that I can provide at this time. With the consent of the Attorney General of Canada, and where appropriate, the Attorney General of Ontario, two individuals stand charged with a number of criminal code terrorism offences. Ahmed El Didi, age 62, and Mustafa El Didi, age 26, face charges for their alleged terrorist activities, including participation in the activities of a terrorist group, ISIS or Daesh, contrary to Section 8318 of the Criminal Code, facilitating a terrorist activity, contrary to Section 8319 of the Criminal Code, Sp conspiracy to commit murder, contrary to Section 465 of the Criminal Code, for a terrorist purpose. One count each of possession of a weapon dangerous to, for a dangerous purpose, contrary to Section 88 of the Criminal Code, again, for a terrorist purpose, those weapons being an axe and a machete. In addition, Ahmed El Didi faces one additional charge for aggravated assault, contrary to Section 268 of the Criminal Code. I want to emphasize there is no evidence to suggest that there is any remaining risk to the public. I would also like to say that I'm very proud of the impressive team effort that went into this investigation. The success would not have been possible without the work done by all involved civilian and sworn members and a collective effort from our partner agencies that I've mentioned earlier and that are here before you. I would also like to thank the Canadian Security Intelligence Service, CSIS. They also assisted with this investigation, as always, and I want to thank them for their assistance. Along with our law enforcement partners, the RCMP remains committed to combating violent extremism both in Canada and abroad. Thank you for everyone coming here today. I will be now reading this statement in French, after which I will turn it over to our moderator to lead us through the Q&A portion. Bonjour à tous, je suis la commissaire adjoint Matt Peggs, commandant régional de la région du centre de la GRC. Et j'aimerais souhaiter le bienvenu à chacun d'entre vous et vous remercier de vous être joint à nous aujourd'hui. J'ai pour tâche aujourd'hui de fournir de l'information sur l'attentat terroriste qui a été déjoué par l'équipe intégrée de la Sécurité nationale, plus communément appelée AISN, de la région du Grand Toronto. L'AISN de la région du Grand Toronto est composé de représentants de la GRC, du Bureau du procureur général de l'Ontario, du Service des poursuites pénales du Canada, du Service de la police de l'Ontario, de Toronto, de l'Agence des services frontalières du Canada, de la police provinciale de l'Ontario et des services de police régionaux de York, de Peel et de Durham. Le ISN fait enquête sur les menaces à la sécurité nationale, ce qui comprend les activités criminelles de nature terroriste et extrémiste. Elle enquête sur les plus graves menaces à la sécurité du Canada. Le 28 juillet dernier, l'ISN de la région du Grand Toronto a arrêté, dans un hôtel de Richmond Hill, un homme et son fille qui ont été aux dernières étapes de planification d'un important et grave attentat à Toronto. Nous avons pris connaissance de cette situation au début du mois de juillet. Une ordonnance de non-publication est en vigueur afin de protéger l'intégrité de cette enquête complexe. Cela dit, je peux vous fournir les quelques détails suivants pour le moment. Avec l'autorisation du procureur général du Canada, deux individus ont été accusés de plusieurs infractions de terrorisme prévues au Code criminel. Les présumées activités terroristes de Ahmed El Didi, âge 62 ans, et de Mustafa El Didi, âge 26 ans, ont donné lieu au chef d'accusation suivant. Participation aux activités d'un groupe terroriste, ISIS ou Daesh, en contravention à l'article 83-18 du Code criminel. Facilitation d'une activité terroriste en contravention de l'article 83-19 du Code criminel. Complot en vue de commettre un meurtre en contravention à l'année 465 du Code criminel. Une chef d'accusation visant chacune des individus pour possession d'une arme d'une dessine dangereuse contravention à l'article 88 du Code criminel. Les armes en question 
étaient une hache et une machette. De plus, Ahmed Aldidi fait face à une accusation des voies de fait grave en contravention de l'article 268 du Code criminel. Je tiens à souligner que tu sembles indiquer que le risque pesant sur la sécurité publique a été écarté. Je tiens également à dire combien de je suis fier de l'impressionnant travail de l'équipe qui a mené à ces arrestations. Cette issue n'aurait pas été possible sans l'excellent travail de tout le personnel civil et policier du, des divers services et sans la collaboration des services et organismes partenaires. Finalement, le Service canadien du renseignement de sécurité, ou SCRS, a également participé à l'enquête. Je tiens à remercier également les membres de son personnel pour leur contribution, avec le soutien de ses partenaires de l'application de la loi, la GRC demeure résolue à lutter contre l'extrémisme violent tant au Canada qu'ailleurs dans le monde. Merci à tous à votre présence aujourd'hui. Je donnerai la parole à notre modératrice, Jennifer Goodings, qui dirigera la période des questions. Merci. We will now start taking questions. Please ask only one question with one follow-up if needed. You're welcome to ask your question in English or French. We will have time for um, plenty of questions. So can I take the first one? Sure, thank you for your question. I will defer to, yep, to James Pryor. Sorry, sorry. So with respect to your question, sorry, can you guys No, thank you for the question. With respect to the individuals at this time, we're treating this as a threat to the City of Toronto as far as particular groups or part of the population at this time. Um, that is part of the publication ban. As uh, Assistant Commissioner Peggs had mentioned, there is a publication ban in effect. And so this is part of the ongoing investigation and I would not want to comment on that right now, but there is no ongoing threat to citizens in the city of Toronto. We're still trying to establish exactly who were the intended targets um, of this attack. Can you tell us if it was elected officials or if it was members of the general public? Again, I, I don't want to continue to reference the publication ban because I'm, I know everyone's aware of that, but in this particular case, it's would be considered the general population. Uh, Sean O'Shea with Global News. You mentioned a machete and an axe. Are those the only weapons we're talking about? Yes, sir. And can you describe what hotel was targeted here or where you found them? Which hotel or Richmond Hill? So I, I, would like, I wouldn't want to identify the hotel for obviously uh, I don't want to affect someone's commercial standing. Uh, the hotel itself is not, uh, I don't think is part of it was certainly not a part of the attack, and it was simply a, a place where they attended. They were renting rooms there. In this particular case, there was a room, yes. John Woodward from CTV. What yep. can you tell us about this attack outside Canada and how that's connected to what happened allegedly here? Certainly, and unfortunately, that is a part of the emerging investigation. Uh, one of the individuals, as, as previously mentioned, is accused of an attack outside Canada and that's going to take some time in order to get all the particular details um, but we have enough obviously to charge this individual with that offense. Was the attack in service of an ISIS operation in a conflict? Uh, unfortunately I would not like to comment on that this time. No, sir. My second question, are, are either of these two Canadian citizens? Yes, sir, they are. Both? Are they both Canadian citizens? Far as far as I understand, yes, they are. Can 
obviously this happened very in the course of this investigation unfolded very quickly and began at the beginning of July and the arrests were made uh, you know, four weeks later. Can you walk us through uh, how the investigation uh, played out and, and how this all happened so quickly? So I'll do the best that I can to address your question. Uh, you are correct in that this was a very fast moving uh, and the, the investigation came to our radar in, 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 in emerged in a very quick fashion. So as far as what we did investigationally, I'll refrain from commenting on techniques or how we proceeded with this, but uh, the information that was presented to us was sufficient to obviously launch an investigation and it led to enough evidence to result in charges against these two individuals. And was there ever, uh, in the course of your investigation, uh, a video uncovered that was, that was um, made by, by this province? Any sort of video or particular evidence would be part of that investigational holding, which I won't comment on at this time. Is that covered by the publication? Anything to do with the investigation and leading to these charges right now um, is part of the publication ban, except for what's in the information that's obviously part of the public record. The father and son, were they residents in the, the city of Toronto? And are there multiple different locations where maybe evidence has been seized as part of the investigation at this point? Certainly. So as part of the information, yes, they are residents of the Toronto region. And are there multiple addresses or locations that they were using maybe to, to plan this attack? I mean, you mentioned the hotel. Were there other locations like this where they previously, in the last month, rented a room or gathered to plan this attack? Certainly. Not that I'm aware of. Uh, so, are, is it just the father and son who are investigating here in Canada, or uh, with the ongoing investigation, is there a possibility there are more people connected? Mm -hmm. So, again, um, and I know it sounds a bit of a, a redundant thing. At this time, these are the two individuals that are being charged with offenses. Uh, we don't believe that there's a greater threat to the city of Toronto or surrounding region. And so if the investigation goes in such a direction that other people uh, come to our attention, well, certainly that investigation will go and we'll try to see what's going on there. But at this time, it's simply these two individuals. Um, I, I know you, you would like to get into specifics, but was, was part of this investigation or part of your awareness is because of things that were posted online, shared online, that kind of thing? So the RCMP receives information in a variety of ways, and that could be through the form of tipsters. It can come through other governmental agencies and partners. Uh, once again, the way that this unfolded, uh, I will curtail my comments at this time, but, uh, but it wasn't as a result of social media, for example. Um, as we discussed a little bit earlier, we were not really aware of these individuals uh, prior to the, the emergence of this file. You mentioned they're Canadian citizens. Are they citizens of any other country? Not that I'm aware of. Um, I know that they're, they're Canadian citizens at this point, um, but I'm not aware of uh, dual citizenship or anything of that nature. Are American authorities engaged in this investigation as well? No, ma'am. Um, Joseph Kovini, Mark, today. Is there anything you can say as far as um, perhaps uh, why they're on Richmond Hill in particular as opposed to any of the places in the area? Mm -hmm. I don't have any information or reason uh, why they selected uh, that particular hotel or Richmond Hill. Is there, is there any reason um, to suspect that they were receiving money from ISIS operatives elsewhere in the world to, to carry out the plan this attack? Mm -hmm. That would fall under the category of investigative holdings, but uh, for what it's worth, I'm, I'm not aware, I, I can't confirm any of, uh, th that they were supported like that. You do hear people getting radicalized by I couldn't comment on that, and I'll t the, the main reason being is that the investigation is ongoing, and perhaps in the future we will have evidence to suggest that it was a factor, but at this time, um, I would say not. How were you able to, to link the father to something that happened in Iraq more, almost nearly 10 years ago? What piece of evidence, was, how were you able to link him to something that happened there so long ago. Mm -hmm. Well, naturally, I won't comment on how we learned, but I'll take this opportunity to, again, congratulate and express my gratitude to 
the regular members, civilian members, and public service employees that work within GTA Inset as far as working together and actually putting all the pieces together to result in that particular charge. Uh, but as far as specifics, uh, I'll refrain from uh, divulging further. And in terms of members of, the, members of the city of Toronto, communities within the city of Toronto that may have been threatened, have you liaised with leaders of, of those communities to kind of bring them into the tent of, of what kind of threats that community was facing? So we're in communication with our police, policing partners, as you can see from the dais today. Uh, INSET itself, uh, again, is an independent body. We're not liaising with politicians or members of parliament in that regard. So, maybe so. Not members, I mean, maybe the Trump, maybe Trump police could, could weigh in on this. I mean, in terms of specific communities within the city or act communities that may have been the target here, have you liaised with leaders uh, in, in that community? Um. We have not liaised with the leaders of that community. However, that doesn't mean that that's not going to take place. As the investigation unfolds and we learn more, there may be opportunities to engage our communities. So, Mr. Pinder, can you talk about the role of Toronto Police in this investigation specifically? Well, the Toronto Police has members embedded in the INSET, in, uh, INSET and the Integrated National Security Enforcement Team being an inspector purchase. So we work with our partners um, at INSET and with the other law enforcement agencies, but terrorism charges are the purview of the federal agency. Superintendent, did the, did the father and son work together to they gravitate? Yes, sir. And, uh, yes, sorry, is, well, why was Toronto targeted? Is it simply because they live here just geographically? Part of the information that we have within that investigation suggests that Toronto would have been a target. Are there other family members who reside in that home with the father and son? And if there are, are they cooperating with the investigation? So obviously with the, with, with a press conference of this nature, we'd like to focus on the, the two individuals who were charged and out of respect for privacy for other family members, I would not like to comment on who else they might be residing with or who might be living in the neighborhood, et cetera. You talk about a member of general population in Toronto. Is there a religious group that was targeted by these individuals? I mean, obviously tensions mm -hmm. are, are quite high in the city itself between yeah. members of different religious faiths. Yeah, naturally it's a very tense time and, and we're all aware of that. Uh, we are still trying to establish completely who those targets might be. So, which agency carried out the arrest? Arrests. So the RCMP carried out the arrest, and we had assistance from the York Regional Police as far as processing and um, our procedures. Yeah, I, I certainly can. How I'll frame my answer is like this. As you know, they were charged with having particular weapons. In other words, we're pretty confident how close they were to moving from simply having those uh, tools and then moving on to actioning that threat. And so I couldn't, pres I couldn't tell you six hours, 10 hours, 12 hours. But once again, what I'll say is because of the swift nature of all of law enforcement, our partner agencies on this, uh, we were able to halt that threat. Um, but we believe it was quite, not only like, I don't want to say imminent as again, it's within an hour or two, but it was close. And was Toronto the only target? From what we have, we knew that there was a threat potentially to Toronto and we're not aware of other threats within the, the GTA. No, sir. A uh, question for uh, Superintendent uh, from Riverton Police. Can you speak more to uh, your, your, your forces' uh, role in this and that uh, process of implementing? Uh, yes, question. Just wait for Thank you. Thank you for the question. Uh, York Regional Police is one of the partner agencies um, in the INSET, uh, INSET uh, group. And um, we are committed to supporting our policing partners in the realm of national security and uh, we will support them where necessary. So in this instance, 
Um, as my partner has iterated, we were there to support the arrests and the processing of these two individuals. Talk about the arrests. What was that moment like when your officers actually went into that hotel room or hotel and, and actually apprehended this father and son? At the risk of being bland and the risk of perhaps not providing exactly the sort of information that uh, is newsworthy, what I want to say is this, the teams that were responsible and the support teams that were responsible for effecting that arrest completed their job in a tactful or a tactical manner. They did it uh, exactly the way they're trained and it went off exactly the way that it was planned. Um, of course, I was not there, so it's difficult to provide that first person account, but based on the feedback provided by the investigative team, uh, those support units, our emergency uh, response team, as well as the, I believe the Durham Regional Paramedic Service was there as well. Uh, they affected that rest in a textbook fashion, and luckily, uh, you know, uh, I would say there was no damage that would be above what we would, uh, what would you would expect, and again, no serious injuries resulted uh, from that arrest. So, is there a safety stack? Our emergency response team was involved, yeah. And what time of day did this take place? It happened uh, later in the evening. Late evening, by after nine? Yeah, that's right. Superintendent, given that you were able to uh, prevent uh, a serious attack, in, in, your, in your words, in, in that these people were not at all on your radar a month ago, does it make you reassess the handle of the that you have on potential domestic terrorism in the GTA and across the country? Mm -hmm. Certainly, sir. So I think the best way to answer that one. Um, I got mine on here. Well, we need that one. We can't take it. Okay, we're good? All right. Um, national security is very much the primary, is the primary focus of the federal policing program. But it's also very, very much a shared responsibility, and that's why you have so many of the partners before you here today. So, we, as was mentioned, we collect sources of intelligence, and we take tips. We take several things in, and so yes, we are constantly vigilant, as are all the other police services, and I would like the public to be as well. But. Um, as I said, national security is very much a shared responsibility, primary focus of the RCMP's federal policing program, but shared responsibility amongst intelligence enforcement agencies also. And the uh, national security landscape, the investigations we do, they're becoming more complex, um, but we remain vigilant as to the other police services, as to the intelligence agencies, and as we'd like the public to be as well, to continue to be able to, to address these threats. As with City TV, and I understand you have a legal type of to walk here, but tensions are high for the world, and when we hear something like this happening in our own area, uh, everyone's anxiety increases. Is there any more you can tell us to relieve some of that anxiety? Because there's communities out there that are now very fearful that this terrorist attack might have happened towards them, whether it be their religious uh, base or their I, I can understand I but to protect the integrity of the investigation that we have and to respect the publication ban there's no there's nothing more that we can say with the details except I can say that we believe there is no threat to public safety at this time based on the investigation that we've done We adjust, we adjust the resources and the support to individual, individual investigations as the circumstances dictate.
Um, what can you tell us about the strength of that organization today and its capacity to launch attacks in Canada or, or anywhere else? So, Chairman. I'm not sure if you can hear me. I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, please use the mic. So with respect to your question, again, the RCMP as well as our policing partners, we truly are a law enforcement, public safety first domestically, and, and that's really our goal. So when you ask about internationally what that strength might be, a lot of that information would come from our partners, whether it's D&D, whether it's the service. So it's difficult for us to discuss what their bench strength would look like and what overall threat that they would pose to Canada. Uh, because we have that synergy and that chemistry with our uh, partners, when there's a threat or we, uh, if there's information to suggest that there is a public safety concern, we will receive it. One thing I will say with respect to this topic is that that's a threat that hasn't gone away and we haven't forgotten, especially in a world where so many other threats have emerged over the last number of years. But as far as a ranking, for example, I wouldn't know where to place them, but it's still a concern. Have you been able to ascertain how he came to, to Canada uh, after seemingly being an active member uh, of ISIS, committing what you charged him for, and who knows what else, you know, more than 10 years ago? How did he come to Canada? Was he a Canadian citizen in 2015? Can you put together uh, and offer some of the time mm -hmm. information you have on? Yeah, I'm unable to comment or answer that right now, but I'm but I'm quite I'm confident that the investigation will bear that out, and of course it'll be subject to your favorite publication ban probably. I appreciate it's under a publication ban. Can you talk about the uh, the scale of threat to Toronto? Is this against one or two people, or are we talking about a larger scale attack that was that was possible? Mm -hmm. Our belief is it was small, uh, to use your word, uh, and and and, and I'm, uh, simply. The information we have is that it wasn't some sort of widespread sort of threat, which again provides us some confidence in saying that we believe that the threat is neutralized. We don't believe that there's something outstanding right now as we sit here. Uh, but as far as what or where that plan may have went, naturally we don't know how it could have grown, but we do know that it was real. And how do you make the decision, Superintendent, as to how long you monitor someone? Mm -hmm. on your radar before you actually move in and make an arrest mm -hmm. and you determine that it's a valid threat. Yeah. So each investigation will be different naturally based on the factors. But to answer your question, in this particular case like any other, if there is a threat and we have the evidence to charge, we will obviously act right away. So there wasn't, this wasn't a cat and mouse monitoring type situation. We wouldn't obviously put the public in, in jeopardy that way. So as soon as we knew that there, and again, it's misleading to use the word imminent, but apparent and forthcoming might be the best way to say it. Because this attack, we believe, was in its advanced stages, it was time to act and obviously um, intercede. Just from that, are you, are you saying that the hotel trip was a planning event? Were they, were they on some kind of an attack planning retreat, if you will? Trip part of it? We're still going through our investigative holdings to determine the whole scope and breadth of their reason for being there. Uh, Commissioner, I was wondering if I could ask you a question. Yep. Um, data shows over the last. Uh, I do. I think that it is necessary to treat terrorism as serious, but to treat it as a criminal act. This is not based on individual communities or anything like that. It's individuals that are terrorists and are criminals. I, I, that I think is the best way to focus our messaging. Would you call this a homegrown plan? Would you say that it was actually a Unfortunately, I think that'll come with time. 
as far as getting, again, going back to that investigative piece where we're able to put all the details together, we might have a better sense. Unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to provide you a definitive answer at this moment. So I take it you're going through their We're con uh, conducting a conventional investigation. Which would the Anything that we're legally able to obtain, we'll do what we have to do. So, Kevin, can you say that this father, I guess, was a member of, an active member of ISIS back in 2015? Once again, uh, I would be remiss to make a conclusive statement about what his standing was, but there is sufficient evidence to charge him with the offense that's listed on the information. Can you say what type of employment the two had? Uh, actually, I can't confirm right now. And it's not because I'm, I don't want to or unable to. I don't have that information. Did they have a pretty good property, though? Like they seem to be fairly well off? I believe it was actually a, a, a decent home, yes. But. Uh, Can you speak to was there any attempt to procure. Tom, let's see if you're trying to pull that Was there any attempt to procure firearms at all? You know that you're limited right now to the sure. machete and the other weapon. But was there any attempt? Whatsoever that you're aware of. We're aware of the two weapons that we found them with as being part of this attack. As far as other uh, other weapons, that'll come out in the investigation. Can you let me know why the RCMP and its are involved in this, but say they wouldn't have been involved in the last major ISIS event, which I think would have been the Chicken Land shooting um, with the three individuals who were recently convicted? What, what's the difference between the so with respect to the investigation you're referring to, um, because of some certain elements of that investigation that came out during that trial, uh, I will say that, again, that collective uh, police force of jurisdiction and RCMP sort of collaboration, we are aware of that investigation. Um, but again, it comes back down to evidence and what someone could be charged with or, or not. I guess you're kind of talking about why they weren't facing terrorism charges on top of the conspiracy and murder and those, uh, yeah. or I believe there was actually murder, Certainly. Murder, murder charges. That, that's what yeah. the question you're answering there is that they, there wasn't the evidence necessary for a terrorism charge. Yes, sir. Do you anticipate further charges against these two? It's too pre premature to make a comment on that, sir. Was the son born in Canada? Uh, I'm not sure, ma'am. Uh, I'm unable to confirm at this time. Again, once we go through all the holdings, we'll be able to have a, a clear picture of who their grievances may have been with. Just to be clear, you can't say when they moved to Canada. They didn't, in fact, they came from other countries, is that right? Yeah, I, I don't have the dates. Um, it's not that I don't want to. I don't have the dates to provide that with you. But you're not saying that they both came from another country, or you're, you are no, I believe they came to Canada um, at a previous date. Uh, we keep hearing about how easy it is to get guns uh, in the GTA. Now, why do you think they get such unsophisticated weapons? This is strictly an opinion, but it's one of the things that we see in the, uh, the, the security world where, again, there's messaging about low tech, and that's what appears to be the case here. Was the axe and machete recovered from the hotel room? They were charged with having possession of these items. But it was on, in the hotel room, not at their residence in Toronto? They had them, yeah. Just, just, just what you said earlier about low tech, are you kind of implying that because it's low tech, they're able to get the weapons easily? Without the scrutiny that might come with a firearm? Well, what I, what I wanted to do is provide an answer, an overall answer with, with some of the things that we're seeing. What you just said is, in fact, true. It's easier. Um, but I can't speak to their mentality or what their thought was. Um, I can only address what we, they were found with. We have time for one more question. Were they looking at uh, any arm pass or UAV type systems they use in their attack that you're aware of? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't uh, miss it. Like any drone type systems. 
Uh, not that I'm aware of. Okay, this concludes our press conference. Thank you very much for attending. Ceci conclut notre conférence de presse. Nous vous remercions de votre présence. Thank you.